Honestly, folks, seriously, who even cares about a Porsche Macan these days? Particularly an electric model. That's the truth, isn't it? Not quite so. Just look at the significant number of dedicated enthusiasts here who showed interest in the Macan as a pre-production vehicle two months ago unveiled at Lynn Garda. 336,000 saw this video. And that always makes me wonder, where does this outcry for affordable cars come from? Because those really aren't being watched as intensely. It's the fascination once Porsche. And of course, what can this new PPE platform do? And that's what I'll show you today. Finally, Porsche is spilling all the details on this car. For instance, we finally know the net battery size, something they just flat out refuse to reveal. Then the impressive, quite compelling figures on trunk space, then the dimensions that truly make the vehicle stand out as unique within this segment. And even more, which I shall show you today. Then, of course, the design. I wanted to approach things a bit differently today. Um, I'll pull this down right now, so just for a second, I feel like I'm simply taking over. Because, to be quite honest, this car genuinely caught my eye, even though mine is somehow quite another category in terms of size and design focus. But I'm just a big, dedicated Porsche enthusiast fan. Does that make me a bit biased in my judgment? Yes, emotionally for sure, but if it's crap, it's called crap, and if it's awesome, it's hailed as awesome. So you know the drill with Carmaniac, uh, because that's what makes him unique. If you're looking for a similar car, of course, you'll find it on Avium. Where else when we have over 8,000 electric cars online? The largest. Platform dedicated exclusively to electric vehicles. Europe's, but you won't really find anything quite like this, since the size, the focus, and the power make it tough to actually name a competitor. When mentioned, they're much larger. Lotus Elettra, BMW iX maybe, Mercedes EQE as an AMG version or the normal one, for instance. Right over here in the very far right-hand corner is the powerful turbo. And in the left-hand corner, we've got the standard Macan S4. I'll demonstrate that now. Subscribe. It really makes me happy. You won't miss videos. And now let's take a look at these two beauties here. Go. make the choice now should I tear it apart like a dude or shall I make it somewhat sexy what up Francesco all right so I'll attempt to do it like this so here it comes presented in vivid color with maximalism at Carmignac naturally starting with the worse one since we're saving that noticeably cooler one for later this is the Macan model in that unique Provence color isn't it an impressively unique sick color right it's a soft lilac purple, so you could say lilac too, but at Porsche we call it Provence, because where does the Porsche customer go? Certainly to their stunning home, which they acquired from an embassy, of course, in the French Provence. And that's why the color's name Provence looks stunning, so that's the four-seater. You can tell by the wheel design too, but it's really sleek. We'll get onto the design in just a moment. I've also noticed, it's really my first time, I haven't yet peeked underneath. And here we have on display, uh, in the Elegant shade ice gray, if not mistaken, the turbo. It's labeled right on the back. Take a look. So here we're seeing the rear end uncovered for the first time. And I've seen the car. Yes, I was up close. I've driven it extensively in that um, covered video. But honestly, I wouldn't have thought it'd look like this. I pictured him differently. Do I like it? Yes, damn it. He does indeed. Why does he now actually have absolutely no significant real competitors? I've mentioned its size. We have one here. You might see it there in the flood. What would you possibly guess how very long it really is? Well, it's not incredibly long, I believe. People always seem to complain about the SUVs. Yet there's truly none other, I honestly believe. But kindly please write in the comments if I'm mistaken. No other electric SUV with such remarkable power. At 479 meters in length. That's what it is, 479 meters long. So it's really not an exaggeration. In the end... It's even one centimeter shorter than a BYD seal. Sure, it's a sedan, but just to put it into context. And it's just about seven centimeters longer than a Tesla Model 3 Highland. So it really is uh, not big at all. Not overly big, this piece is either. It's 1.62 meters, roughly the same as Francesco. How tall are you? Um, plus 20 again. Okay, so roughly estimating, I was almost on the mark. And he's not exceptionally wide either. So whenever it comes to discuss this topic, it's still six feet, four inches. I am assuming that is without any mirrors um, because he certainly does present quite a masculine appearance, which I genuinely really, really like. Some might critique this a bit as it reminds them of uh, the Hyundai Kona. And as a Porsche driver, would you want to be reminded of the Kona? Maybe not. I'm not sure without insulting the Kona, but it's a completely different car. Up here is the daytime running light, you see, and up here, the main headlamp. It's quite new, this particular way. I certainly need to get a bit accustomed to it. But of course I find uh, these vents very cool. Until now, Porsche had for quite some time these four dots. 
I think it's really awesome. But I've got a lot more other super cool stuff for you, like for instance, the theme of volume, that is storage capacity. What color do you favor, my friends? Please kindly share in the comments. I'm genuinely curious about your selections. Honestly, I fancy this, even if I like purple. But then it must be proper purple or not at all. This one actually does make the car uh, 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 look a tad bit more masculine with the uh, wheel arch surrounds in polished piano black. Am I a fan of it? Not especially. Does it appear cool? Yes, certainly it does. Uh, but any person who drives this car will probably, as is usually the case, take it through the car wash. And that scratches piano lacquer always does. For this reason, I can straight away recommend the Queasy uh, Car Maniac Dry Wash Wonder. That's exactly what I do with my own car too. And my car isn't exactly bottom of the range either. And um, that's how I effectively remove all the dirt. Plus, it waxes too. You'll surely see uh, in the description below, linked it or up here. So with this useful tool, you can actually clean it. Generally, I'd prefer to wash the car by hand. Likewise, with, I mean, within a car wash, simply because of this application. A lot of really gentle touch in the back area. That's Porsche's deliberate choice. Also hyper, hyper sensitive. If you accidentally drag something heavy across here or drop it, well, you should consider installing a protective film for these key elements. I did the same with mine, you know, uh, had my winter rims wrapped to prevent scratches since they have that piano lacquer finish. So, a truly stunning, gorgeous rear end here. Let's get down to some technical specs while we're at the rear. Indeed, this robust vehicle can easily tow two tons. Quite impressive. It's not quite exactly top scale, but then again, not many cars can actually reach that top scale. The EV6 can tow two and a half tons uh, EV9 uh, and IX, both two and a half tons. That's about it, I guess, for that segment. But they're much bigger, you know. This one can haul two tons, which is more than enough. I'm not sure what people haul. I never tow anything, so that's why I'm not really interested in towing capacity. But I know you really care, and I understand that roof boxes are interesting too, since we traveled that way in the summer, and it was truly quite fun. Yes, indeed, two tons. So let's eagerly move to this model because I just like it much better, especially regarding the trunk space before we get to the battery specs and all that. Come, we, uh, we have right here, just over here. Optionally, actually indeed, 480 to 540 liters. Why optionally? Optionally applies solely to the Provence over there because if you purchase the turbo, you'll receive a Bose sound system and that ensures that you experience a trunk space deficit of exactly 60 liters. Yes, a proper sound system for a turbo um, is indeed important. However, I'd really like the option to choose if I prefer the trunk space as a customer. Because 5 and 40 liters or even 480 liters, that's quite a big difference, right? 540, fabulous. Let's have a closer look over here. And uh, 480 simply isn't that much anymore. And such a particular vehicle is used quite uh, widely across a wide variety of scenarios. But now has the Bose done very smartly. Now they've equipped that with Bose, so we can't show it. Many thanks for nothing, uh, but whatever. Uh, so just imagine this Bose sound system out of the picture. And then you'll have a rough idea of what to expect with the 540 liters. That's precisely why you can choose to include the high-end Bose sound system or not. Then you'd face the trunk space deficit, but as a small consolation, I've got something for you up front. That's a surprisingly spacious frunk, absent from various manufacturers. Where are they? Because use remote too. That's likely through. Um, no, this, the, there's a button right here. They've installed a button beneath the window controls. Capture that. Missed all that, huh? All right, let's go again. It's an effect Porsche is really proud of. I think it's pretty awesome too. For instance, with the Lucid, it's also a push button operation. You gotta smack it, right? No, you have to press it down like this. Um, so watch carefully. You push this button and then the latch pops open. That's awesome, right? It's really fun. That's how I like it. And here's your consolation prize with a Bose sound system. You've got another 84 liters of volume up front here and that's pretty substantial. And what I honestly really find quite nice, does typical Porsche all lined with felt, no plastic. Sure, place shoes here, I ponder shoe topics. Then people ask if it's cause of Alex Bangula as he's got 8,000 well-worn ones in his Tesla at the front. No, I'm thinking of sports like tennis, for example, where you it's quite obvious that the Porsche driver plays tennis just to play around with a few cliche scenes. Thinking in stereotypes as there's the, this tennis court surface, it wouldn't be in the passenger compartment and perhaps not in the trunk either, but here. And plastic is indeed more practical, yet this indeed seems more appealing. We have just discovered another compartment here. And look here, here's yet another. By the way, since we were elaborating on Crazy Car Maniac, we also have an extensively comprehensive first aid kit set available online, um, or rather a first aid box, I should say, uh, the Crazy Car Maniac first aid box. 
and look, this one seems even snazzier than Porsche's. Housed in a sleek red hard case, it even matches the red. Take a look at this, after all, it needs regular updating. Here we simply have some windshield washer fluid, uh, nothing else at all up front. You've got no business there, uh, but it's all wheel drive, meaning both axles, front and rear are powered. And this um, logo here in the front looks really nice. Even though it's colorless, I still like it quite a lot. So bam, there we have it, uh, a cool front. Just look at that turbo from the front, but I can't really see. Do you spot the big difference from the standard one? I kind of don't see it, the lip on the ground. Uh, where exactly? Yeah, but that's pretty much it. Uh, since it's the piano, I have to check here because I myself can't really tell the difference between the two at the front. Yes, it's the lip. This is the plastic, which to be honest, when I look at it, I find it a bit inelegant right there. Here are the wheel arches of it. Uh, there's a clear difference to standard. So if you don't have this package, but this one here, uh, it's plastic. Certainly in terms of actual resilience, it's noticeably more forgiving than piano. Piano just looks way cooler. Even with this carbon layer here on the door, it obviously looks super chic. What's with the noises he's making all the time? He's mad because I'm not showing him. That needs a significant turbo boost. But the color, it's super awesome. That's perfectly correct, like Antarctic frost. Silver white, something quite like that. I truly like it a lot, actually. And the car simply looks really very damn cool from the front. So they absolutely and truly nailed that one. Let's see if we can turn on the headlights to really show you what it looks like. If we simply turn on this bright light just over here, wait merely one single moment, is it on? How about right now, now? In fact, I'd like to see for myself what it looks like. After all, they've considered that not just one lights up, but two. And this creates a nice symmetry which naturally extends the car's width from the front and makes it look as masculine as it already is. Looks good, I like it. Combined with running lights, do we have dynamic indicators? Yes or no? We're trying out these little details today. Um, and if you, despite the, no, but that's quite awesome. Uh, looks very awesome, right? Are you also into lights like these? I like stuff with lights. I really do. Even when my Mercedes project stars onto the ground when you turn it off. I enjoy that a lot. But despite the amazing Matrix LED, now if your son, daughter, wife, partner, brother-in-law, whoever gets to drive this car, if you own it, assuming you let others use it, I personally wouldn't do that. And yet if some accident happens, I'll put a link directly in the description box below related to this specific brand as well, to the Helvetia IK insurance. Because it, with this one, you get various benefits. Do the math, don't just start complaining. Perhaps it's not well suited for your vehicle, but perhaps it is. Potentially you might save money, possibly not. Indeed, the uh, collection of insured people is not limited. That means if you are a policyholder with Helvetia, have insured this car with Helvetia, then you can let anyone, no matter who, drive it. Even if it's someone you don't know who says, hey, take it for a spin and they ding your rim, you're still covered. That's really, really quite cool. And you get 15% of your premium back every single year if you've no accidents. There are also other great benefits with Helvetia insurance. I own my car or indeed several cars with Helvetia too, and I'm really happy with it. Check it out carefully, go do the math yourself and then see if it really suits you. And the one thing I really, truly don't exactly fancy, to be thoroughly honest, is that unlike the BMW i5, they've deliberately opted for brushed metal applications right here. Unfortunately, not here, though. So this is plastic. Uh, here, too, here, too, and here as well. Right? I would like your thoughts on this. Um, you can expand to over 1,300 liters by pulling this lever, and that collapses. For that, however, the front passenger seat must be moved quite a bit forward so that this seat can even tip over. Let us proceed in this manner now. There, quite just like that. See, this is what your cargo area appears like. If you turn it, for instance, simply because you've been on a furniture store run. Smooth and even, no sharp edge, I praise, looks really good indeed. I'll flip myself back up again shortly, because surely, of course, I really want to demonstrate to you the seating possibilities. No soft clothes, uh, and, 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 and that's starting at what price, since we're on the subject. So that specific model over there costs uh, quite funny pricing indeed. Uh, that one, the four-seater, is priced at 83,992 euros. 93, my apologies. So you're short seven euros for it to be 84,000 euros. That's the base for that. For that, the starting price is actually higher. It costs 115,000, 114,000 and change. In that range, I think it makes little difference anymore. 
means if you equip it with all the things you can at Porsche, like logo here, logo there, seatbelt in this hue here, seatbelt in that shade there, then you're, I think, well, up to 150 you'll hit for sure. Might hit 160, not sure, but, but it's quite an awesome piece too. This model will probably max at about 120 when it's fully equipped. Interestingly enough, although they do certainly vary somewhat in price, they don't in WLTP range. The 4 Series manages with a certain tire size, I think it refers to 20 inches, you can go up to 22 inches, achieves 613 kilometers WLTP. Uh, the Turbo 592 model. So, to me personally, that very small difference simply doesn't justify opting for the 4 Series. As long as your wallet, of course, can stretch to cover the turbo. Often there are people who say, I could have afforded a Turbo Estacan, but I chose the GTS because it has a better range. You don't actually see that here. Let's take a closer look at the leather. It's quite dark, seems a bit more elegant, almost fancy. Now let's check the light leather on the other side. Taking charge, overall battery size and aspects like before we take a detailed look inside. So we have got a neat little charge port right here, which I can actually open up with merely just a push of a button. If that works, I'll have to check it out. No, I don't think so. Uh, because on the Taycan, it actually slides down. Hold on, what's here? Uh, yes, indeed, it should work. Unlock Frank with the key too. I think that's cool. You can press here and then Frank opens up. Uh, but I can't seem to get the charging flap open right now. Maybe I'm just a damn fool, you know? So we have in the back, uh, on the driver's side, the CCS connection. On the other hand, I mean on the right, we've got the AC port. This means you can charge AC or use a wall box or a public charging station on either side. That's very convenient depending on where you park. If you park there, you don't have to pull the cable over the car. It occurs often and it's quite annoying. For instance, I dislike uh, dragging cables across my paintwork, but you're forced to, uh, or you can connect it on the other side. DC, so the uh, fast, I mean direct current, it happens here and it can charge with 270 kilolov at over 800 volts. I've explained it many times before, we have this battery banking system, which can imaginarily split the battery with a switch into two times 400 volts for 400 volt columns. Then it charges at 150 kilo love. Um, in the best case scenario, so if you drive to an Ionity charging station with the car, you can draw your maximum power since those columns can handle up to 350 kilo miles. You'll go from 10 to 80% in 21 minutes. That's quite impressive considering we've got 95 net kilowatt hours here. That was the figure Porsche just wouldn't disclose. No way, no how. Now we get it, 100 gross, 95 net. Porsche's incredibly valuable learning experience with the Taycan. You don't need to be within a certain percentage at the charging window for maximum power, but that you can also open the charging window and that you can get much more of the closer to the gross with the net. So 100 gross, 95 net. Respectively, if you manage to drive this car on a foreign highway with 20 kilowatt hours, which I believe we even managed on the highway near Lake Garda, something like that. So then you'll indeed manage 400 kilometers easily on German highways where the Porsche drivers first let it rip top speed 220 km h, but here it's 250 and I believe 260, correct? Well noticed, it was a test, actually wanted to celebrate that, but now I have to find another reason, I'll find something, I always do. So 260, thank you for the addition, the car can handle that, but obviously if you push it to the limit, you can say goodbye to those 400 kilometers. Same goes for combustion engines, but with combustion engines, refueling still remains quicker than recharging, even though this scene uh, might be the fastest we have seen. Because I did some measuring with that Lake Garda video. And what exactly did we witness there? Uh, that he surprisingly in such uh, 10 minutes, did he truly manage to recharge 43 kilowatt hours in just those 10 minutes? I think so. Um, so no other car has done that before, only the Kaoping. What was its actual name? Uh, G9. Was it really the G9? The Kaoping closely matched in value, but no other car, not even the Lucid, hits the mark that the Macan does on the new PPE platform. So now, in terms of charging abilities, you're on track. No more excuses for buying an electric Macan. Anyway, only from 2024, because the Macan, well, meets its end in the combustion engine variant. And thus, we've got quite an impressive bundle here, performance figures we haven't discussed yet. We've got 300 kilowatt here, 408 horsepower. Um, obviously, that's more than sufficient for everyday use. But you know, Carmaniac isn't just a name from nowhere. I simply just really enjoy performance and truly stepping on it. And when it comes to electric vehicles these days, well, massive power isn't so much of a unique feature anymore. My wife drives a smart, 
uh, I mean, a smart Brabus with 430 horsepower. This goes from zero to 60 in well under four seconds, uh, but you could pick a Genesis, an Ionic 5 or something similar. They accelerate in just about 5.1 seconds or perhaps even less. 220 kmh top speed, as I mentioned. For those who drive it just for the love of a Porsche, not really into acceleration, that's fine. But I'd feel much more at home here uh, because here we've got 470 kilowatt. That's a completely different ballpark. That's over 50% more than this one. And uh, this is a staggering, a whopping 639 horsepower and uh, they really kick from the turbo boost, even in overboost. What does that imply? That means launch control, it's like with the Mercedes AMG or the Porsche Taycan so far. So you engage the launch start, then press brake, apply throttle, gradually brake and release brake. And then swiftly it sprints off requiring just a phenomenal 3.3 seconds from zero to 60. That's an intense figure, truly an intense figure. It'll knock your socks off. And uh, when you step on the gas mid-drive, it's no different in my Mercedes, well, the AMG. Then, of course, you're working with the standard horsepower, not the overboost figure. That's just about 430 kilowatts, so approximately around 589 horsepower or something alike, which I truly think should definitely be more than enough, really ought to instill serious fear into just about anyone, without a single doubt. These cars are on 22-inch wheels now. Uh, not fond of them. I'll fade in some rims now that I fancy. Uh, on the model outside. Now that we're on the subject of rims and model, um, just look at this model here, how they've done a very cool job on this. Because on one side, you have the traditional robust steel spring. That comes as standard. And on the other, the advanced air suspension, which the turbo already includes and uh, is optional for the Mac and S. I'd certainly add it. A Porsche should have that, I believe. Of course, the lift function and such as well, especially with the Taycan, which sits lower. It's a nice feature. So um, on the left hand side, uh, from your individual perspective, though, it's on the right when peering at the image. That's the steel spring and next to it, the air suspension. And indeed, there are a variety of distinct wheel designs. I, I, I fancy this. Now, um, not so typical electric vehicle wheel design on a car, slightly more, actually. Not least because of the fact that, of course, the striking red brake calipers are much more visible than, say, here, where they're rather more concealed. So, a very impressive spec sheet. Less impressive for a Series 4, though. It's not that amazingly impressive sort of wow factor, really, but it's, well, quite significantly more affordable. Because um, anyone affording the turbo could drive that, too, but not everyone who can drive that one can drive it. Because if you don't go overboard with the features, you end up with 100k. Yes, it's a lot of money. Yet, uh, they've managed to sell over 800,000 Macans so far in a decade. Where have they sold? Someone surely has the money for the cars. Globally, I'm not sure about Germany, but the Macan has quite a success story. So it's not like no one's buying it. And now it's going fully electric only. So the fans of the traditional combustion engine Macan must adjust to driving without the roar. But this object, it moves. And if you haven't seen it yet, check out my Garda Lake footage with the disguised one. This thing is just purely Porsche engineering. For me, absolutely nothing beats that, I have to tell you. The braking system too, it's just really as nimble and graceful as a dancer. Even though a car that's equipped with a large 95 kilowatt battery can't really be nimble, nonetheless, it drives quite spectacularly well. In a way, a Macan with a standard combustion engine just won't manage because it can't harness the extremely immense power of 1130 newton meters of torque, certainly not like this one, not at all. And secondly, not instantaneously, boom, when you hit the gas, um, there's one thing I want to check before we look at the interior. Did they manage to repair it or no? No, unfortunately, no. So as truly lovely as the car's door panel is, leather, elegant contrast stitching, carbon, matte metal, leather, leather. Not just standard, but here, uh, still covered, not too much covered, but still covered nonetheless. Inside, unfortunately, hard plastic. I don't find it chic, but it's not too bothersome yet on this inner side, let's say. But what bothers me is this. Uh, same with take on, no matter you buy it. Turbo S, turbo beat me dead, here all the way up, look. Up to this edge, hard plastic, I don't like that Porsche. I don't like it. Alcantara starts only here. And I would have preferred it from this point at least. If you're going to make a plastic door sill, this one here has one too. Let's take a quick look. Yes, there's velour here as well, seems to be standard, or they've already got that here. Here you can actually notice, for instance, wooden trim wrapped with rich dark leather. Is that purple? Or what's this? It's, it's, it's really like my um, own grandfather got dragged down with it. It's totally black, right? Yeah, and just here you have carbon. Uh, the wood also really looks nice with it. 
but carbon is definitely sportier. So uh, the only critique so far, uh, this plastic part here, which wasn't improved after the take on. Uh, let's take a look inside, let's get started. Um, but before we move on to the uh, really positive aspects, this thing is a real entertainment beast, this car. Just a bit of criticism beforehand. Come on, for an undoubtedly lovely interior, I must say, some hard plastic parts don't appeal to me. I must point out, in a Porsche up here, the frame of the augmented reality head-up display, which is truly massive, yet still plastic. And this um, is precisely what Francesco discovered right here. Come on, guys, you really could have covered this, couldn't you? What's this here? This part here is covered with soft leather. Here, the glove compartment, it's also fully lined with leather. It's quite subtle, though. Will you eventually match in color? Yes. Shall we fall asleep? Here, uh, 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 this one's also covered in leather, and um, but not that one. Why not? But what's the point, really? Uh, here, it truly doesn't bother me. It's quite nice, smooth, honestly. It doesn't remind you of plastic. I must feel it well to notice. Even this is pleasant with the ridged texture. Yes. Here, you can slide a phone into uh, this compartment. But the plastic here and up at the head-up display bothers me. Otherwise, I see none here inside, but that doesn't really bother me much. Cup holder, extra storage down here, and actually not too little. And this gorgeous climate control unit. I know, dear Tesla drivers, you don't fancy buttons. Or by now, even BYD drivers find it cool. Listen. This panel moves. Uh, you probably can't see it through the camera, but it moves along. I find it wonderful to set the temperature just like that here. I don't even have to look away from the road. I'm driving, I know, the far left one is mine. Pack up everything you can. I will fumble around here all day. Vent power, climate on, off. All right, all the other stuff here. Radio volume, perfect. I kind of like that tactile feel still. So here's the 10.9 inch display and here's that, uh, or was it 10.2 inches? Which way was it? 10.9 and this one's 12.2. This one is slightly larger. This is the large curved instrument cluster. Here you see all, and should you now say, wait, why can't you not see the battery temperature? You certainly do see it indeed. Wait, let me just conjure that up for you while Francesco here bends over backwards for you. So uh, please take a closer look at this. Right here you can see these things, the walking forces, uh, tire pressure. Right here, you see the temperature, um, 21 degrees, 97% battery. You've got everything you need right here. It's beautiful, goodness, the wheel. Francesco said it's thin. True, but indeed it feels incredibly good. And then here, the new Porsche logo in this particular colorless style. I really like it, this simplicity. Of course, leather airbag cover. Some plastic here, yet fine. So it is smooth, uh, quite high grade the drive mode selector. And then you see how this instantly blinks. Just look at that, the new light strip. Wow, it is actually going up. Man, oh man, indeed. And you have to, now just you pay attention, look straight ahead now. It should be going down now, I believe. Now just look ahead. I'm switching the gear into off-road mode. No, it's already shifted up. That scenario unfolded extremely quickly indeed. It's truly, utterly fast into off-road mode. We're going back down, front to rear. That's, of course, the benefit of air suspension, allowing flexible response to off-road conditions. Front once more, maybe this time, watch off-road. Yeah, uh, uh, wow, that's so fast. Can you feel it? Uh, intense, absolutely awesome. Takes forever in my Mercedes, sadly. Right, that's pretty cool. You get more ground clearance, uh, exactly. So drive mode selector, Porsche steering wheel, as we know it, feels very good, really nice, great. Here, um, for driving assistance systems, electric steering wheel adjustment, that should be obvious here, so cruise control on, off. Let's immediately test the language selection, we can do that now. Once we take a quick look at the seats, check them out, these are the seats in the McCann, the beige ones, the light coloured ones. I'm not sure if that really goes well with this car's exterior colour. At Porsche you can customise a lot, that's what sets Porsche apart. Dark purple, that would be awesome with the white car, um, it would match really well, feels great, and it's in Nappa leather too. Splendid. However, I really must reckon without seat ventilation because here we only have the seat heating feature. Here? Uh, right here. What I pressed earlier, that's just seat heating. Unfortunately, I simply really didn't manage to find any sort of seat ventilation button here. Thanks Porsche for skipping trend. Sits uh, uh, still using tactile buttons for mirrors. Nice. Uh, leather here too. Very nice. Velour on the ceiling and there's also a panoramic glass roof. This one doesn't have that but it's available if you want it. Now let's move on to the software. There's stuff surprising me and I must say it's cool. Let's start with the navigation. Here, we'll try one thing directly. Here you spot which charging stations are free, even the charging power. That's pretty awesome. You see there, a good 360, I'll leave it at that. But here's a plain, simple 150, 360. Honestly, I've no idea. Just tap it and you'll see every single detail. What kind of provider is this? What do they do? What's free? Blah, blah, blah. But we need load route planning. 
Uh, navigate to Embleham 1, everyone. Everybody, Embleham. Mark 1, please begin initiating the guidance protocol. It's done in a flash, wham, swiftly and precisely calculated. 662 kilometers will make one stop. Where's that? Right here at an Aral Pulse station. You can see here the travel distance, duration, percentage you're at, where to charge, and the total just a mere 23 minutes for the trip. I find it top notch. Um, now at 97%, what more could you want? What I really wanted so much more, you must know, is just the welcome opportunity to better filter out just a little bit. Enter your charging settings, activate the Porsche charging planner. Sure, it'll plan your route and prioritize the Porsche charging service. But what does that mean? Does it include just Porsche chargers or Ionity, the partner Ionity? I don't know, I'd like to uh, as an Ionity only driver. Uh, especially when you buy a Porsche, you probably get a discounted Ionity rate. I'd like to select to only stop at Ionity um, or at the provider of your choice. Uh, unfortunately, that's not an option here, but you can set the minimum charge at destination to even 2%. Car Maniac likes that. Why? Because I want to arrive as empty as possible so I can use as much of my range as possible and really slam it in, um, into the battery. You can adjust. Of course, it's not necessarily recommended. Because what if the charging station fails? Yet with Ionity, which I use, I've not had an issue, not in a year and a half. Never faced the problem of being stranded or anything that I had to wait or couldn't get a charger. It hasn't happened to me. About 5% set up, it's great. But mentioned, missing providers. Well, besides that, the usual stuff here. Um, and uh, then how the software responds over here. So regarding the software, actually, they've really done something. It hardly lags at all. You might well say that, right? Um, put down for Heidelberg. This was exactly Heidelberg, but come on. So honestly, it's nothing that bothers me. Not at all, honestly speaking. Um, right, then take a look. We've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, uh, wireless. That's really, really cool already. Oh, I almost missed it there. Let's do it now. Bye. I found a YouTube app here. Android Auto, View here, and Apple CarPlay. There, get apps from App Store. In App Center, find apps that, for instance, are your navigation, if using something else. You can certainly do that, uh, but you can also use Apple Maps or Google Maps if you prefer to navigate with them. Let's have a look at YouTube. Um, see now, I didn't even type it in. Somebody surely typed Mac and Beth here. Look, see? That wasn't us. Otherwise, wouldn't have shown it. Just look, my video mentioned with the camouflaged one. And then you can just swipe here. Um, like this runs quite smoothly, right? How fast does it actually load a video here? Well, what should we do here? Uh, open video. Uh, it's not working, strangely. Why not? Uh, anyway, my YouTube app here, it's fine for loading. Not through a browser, not through any nonsense. No, through the app. Feels cooler, friends. Uh, found with Francesco at the App Center. Check this, battle route planners included. That's, uh, that's it here. Karaoke entertainment demo. How cool is that, right? Such a fun blast with the whole family, with your co-pilot, with whoever else joins. I will go now. Excuse me? With me? Your co-pilot, after all? Yes, might as well have another co-driver. Look, take a look at this. Do you have different activities with the kids or something? I'm not sure if I can keep it in. I'll let it run on YouTube, unlisted, to see if they'll hit me with a strike. But right here, look, watch how cool this is. You hit sing and then it displays the lyrics. Neat, uh, look. I wouldn't have cheated on Miley Cyrus. Liam Hemsworth, you loser. So, uh, exactly, super cool, right? It's pretty awesome, it's fun singing here with the family. It was a girl's song. Um, so please don't pin me down on the vocals, okay? Apache's here on a scooter. Awesome, totally awesome, definitely lots of fun. Um, if they have Comet here, I'll look for it. Let's see if they have Comet. So it's cool when a car not known for being entertaining, like a Porsche. No, they really lack Comet, uh, which I think is a pity that it can do this. I find that very, very cool. Sport Chrono, of course, we've got on the key here as well. The Porsche customer wouldn't exactly say that. Spotify shows up in the QR code. You just have to scan that with your phone and voila, Spotify connects to your um, own account. We have Audible, so you can enjoy audiobooks. How does one become a millionaire? Audiobooks, indeed, so you can absolutely afford this car, but you don't need to be a millionaire for it. But certainly you really need to have a very good wallet. Here you've got this tile, customizable, the e-sound and all, head-up display, yada, yada, yada. What I love, look at this finally. Um, it's the end of the line for the Taycan's cave-like camera. Anyone who drives a Porsche Taycan will surely agree with me. It's the worst camera in the entire world. Here's 
uh, a quite fine camera. Looking back, there's no fisheye effect visible even to the front. Here, we've just got these light thingies. Uh, and the cool part is, if you tap right here, you get the world's sickest rim camera. When you carefully reverse your vehicle into the parking spot, you can see precisely where the rim is, where the curb edge is. And the cool thing is you can also switch to the front rim sixth is. Um, you won't be scuffing up your beautiful 22 inches and those are some great perspectives. Well done. Thank you for finally listening and not offering that terrible, quite huge, completely, utterly outdated camera model you have back in Germany and then straight out of here. Exactly. Nice menu, quite nice structure, nice electric sound. Let's turn that off. Kind of annoying. Uh, turn off the head up display too. What you can't do, which is tad disappointing, is give command to say open charging flap. My Mercedes is able to do that. Indeed, the previous one could as well. Yeah, a bit of a shame. I wanted to show you the air conditioning because at last, after the Taycan, we've got haptic adjustments again. I really appreciate that you don't use the screen for this with the swiping up and down. It's simply always much easier, I personally think, without having to look. And uh, programmable auxiliary heating is available, of course, and uh, can be activated immediately for stationary air conditioning. For that, the car must be off or it will provide auxiliary heat as soon as you unlock the vehicle. So while still in the house, you hit unlock and the car in the garage opens up and starts to climate control. I mean, what to desire, right? It's neat, complete package, don't you think? No big screen, but uh, it works. You've a Porsche, remember that? This here for the passenger isn't obvious either. And this is actually a, a display, I think, but I can't. Do you see anything? Ah, uh, you see, I don't see a thing. Pass me the camera. Uh, look, uh, you can't see anything from my spot from here. Only the main screen, this display. When I look over, I can't see a thing. If you come from here, uh, you see it properly. That's awesome, That's, uh, it's really well done. Do I have to keep filming myself? Yes, I'd love to. I get so much um, hands-on chance, but sadly, I don't have these wrist movements. So, okay, take another look back. I really like the whole thing. Well, I can see myself getting on with this as my next vehicle, but I'll prefer to wait for the uh, uh, Taycan facelift to see its offerings. And here to see what's sitting behind me is like, I hate these comfort features. Since I want to adjust the seat exactly to my size, it moves to a different position after I get out, naturally. It should really stay put. How does one do that? Once again, please. Why so much plastic? Someone gets in the back and thinks you've bought yourself a Porsche, not a... I'm at a loss for words. Is it a Sangyong Dasha? Uh, Dasha. Lots of plastic around, really. But over here, they included leather. Sure, go forth, guess. Here we see the isofix points. Look, just here you can... A, I'm not sure how. Ah, you pull from here. Snap, it goes on. I think that's great. Very accessible. These are two pieces. That's the bra. Would have been very nice. One at the front too, in a family SUV, but never mind. Let's put down the center armrest. Two cup holders, so all is so good. Uh, now let's switch back up here. Can this be opened? Um, I'm curious to see if there's a ski hatch here. Of course, we must cater to the uh, ski elite. Yes, of course. What would Porsche be without a pass-through? Bam, you can slide the skis through here. Um, nice uh, velour, not velour, sorry, carpet. Carpet material, right? But how exactly do I have more space behind me now? I'd really like to know that. We have an SUV here and it's not tiny, not enormous, but not small either. Just look at this. Is that fine with lighting? It bugs me we lack soft close. It bugs me uh, because you never pull the door closed hard enough. And then, it, yes, this is indeed leather covered, just that they couldn't cover the side. But the main thing is whoever sits behind me gets to look at leather, right? I've got space here. It's not a ton of space, but I've got space here. It's enough for me, uh, right? Look at this. I can even nicely tuck my feet into the footwell without scratching my shoes. No metal parts. In the back, we've got another nice climate control panel with a display. Looks absolutely great, the entire setup. Leather feels quite premium indeed. How's the headroom for someone 6'2"? Even if I stretch out, I can sit here comfortably. Uh, could have even had hair. Everything's first class. We have grab handles at every seat is great. Here, please linger. Um, since the car achieves adequate range. Test nears, Hesse found usage. So this is fun, really comfy seats. Headrest like this, uh, top notch. You really can't complain. The only question I, as a dad of three, have to ask is if you have any kids, which is quite plausible indeed for Porsche Macan customers. A sizable isofix station will simply not fit in here. So those with support legs, uh, that won't be enough. That's always the drawback. I fit quite well with my fairly large thighs and must say I've really gotten large thighs. Want to feel them, Flaw? Thighs got big now uh, from lots of leg exercises. Wouldn't do that. N kids sit normally, no issue at all. There's also room for the child's legs, just not for the bulky bases. Alrighty. Next, I'll show you two cool tech features. Let's add someone else. 
the shoes into guilt? No, the guilt into shoes. Yes, that's exactly the way. And warm regards before I earnestly start blaming anyone whatsoever to the enchanting Leandra and to the villain who messed things up here. I just had to share that, my dear friends, so you could get a glimpse of the spoiler. The dynamic or personally individually adjustable spoiler feature just looks so much cooler like that. It's a whole different ball game. 3D lettering no longer behind glass. Just feels right. You've got to be careful though, not to get your letters stolen. And one thing, obviously I wanted to defend myself a bit, uh, that uh, Klutz Thomas Malksack from Autogefühl, he's the one who broke the charging flap here. Unsure if it's truly so, I will present it just like that. That's the reason why I couldn't open it there. Somebody definitely broke it as they keep banging and pressing on it. You just need to touch it here since there's a sensor inside. And hold on, car unlocked? No, locked. Uh, of course, must be open. Hold on, where is it? Failing once again, not? Yes, here, exactly. Then it slides up like inward. Actually a pretty cool mechanism. And if you lock the car or after five minutes, if you don't do anything, it closes automatically or simply when you lock it. Cool, huh? By the way, almost slipped my mind as we're doing this, it's pouring down here. We came by car, of course. And should you be actively searching for something to recharge this very car at your cozy vacation home, which you undoubtedly will, cabin, holiday house, wherever it might be, in the snow or directly right under the sun, whatever it is, uh, then I'll link down in the description box the juice booster for those of you who are new here and are interested in an electric car. For this, or really for any electric car, it's the perfect way to charge as it's super robust. I've got that set up outside now. As you can see in the insert, it was still dry then. I charge the EQS with my trusty juice booster. Some ask, what's the point of that? Yes, exactly for this. Vacation home, when you're on the road, there's no wall box, no charging station nearby. We're in the industrial area, but they've got a red industrial socket. I plugged in the juice booster, bam, charging at 11 kilo. Oh, see, it's 11 kilo. Uh, car just takes 11 kilo off now, AC. Uh, well, that's it. It will come up that there's also 22 kilo available, but you probably won't be able to retrofit that since it's really a hardware issue. With the Juice Booster 3R, the compact one I have now, you only charge at 11 kilowatts anyway. If you want 22 kilowatt, you need to purchase the two Juice Booster 2. Both, as mentioned, I'll link below for you. And through my link, you get an adapter thrown in, which you might need for your vacation home or whatever it might be. So what about the Macon? Impressive stuff. Uh, impresses me a lot. It definitely goes on my list of um, potential next cars, maybe, even if it's a completely different beast compared to the EQS in terms of size, in terms of focus, as I've already mentioned. Battery capacity, large tested it, super efficient indeed. Charging speed just can't be topped right now. And it's a Porsche, right? That is really the point, truly. A Porsche indeed is still much a Porsche. An old one isn't outdated. It's simply timeless. That's a Porsche. That's why it impresses me, just like that. But with the other black rims, Looks pretty damn awesome, doesn't it? That's exactly what an electric car needs. It's like moving away from that round and chubby look, yet it still achieves a drag coefficient of 0.25. Unlike the 0.37, which the current combustion engine Macon has, there you see the big difference. So uh, this is uh, amazing and still looks awesome. You don't have to miss out on this though. It kind of stands there like a little Hulk. I love that. Great piece. Pricey, but well, it's a Porsche. So. Hope you enjoyed this video. If that's the case, leave a thumbs up. That'd make my day. I'd be so delighted if you subscribed, especially with these, we welcome new viewers. Employing my Maycan pre-drive video in which a substantial number of folks tuned in, I observed there were 50,000 fresh viewers who'd never joined us before. Since uh, customers aren't watching electric mobility videos, they know, okay, McCann's electric, so they're looking. As said, subscribe to the channel, I'm thrilled, won't let you down. This isn't just about pragmatism, not simply about a lack of emotion or the efficiency trailing behind a truck, but about passion. Let's talk about e-mobility, not through those rose-tinted glasses. Goodbye.